How's it hanging dudes? My name is Sean and welcome back to Humanity First and man, CNN is uh, a lot of people criticize Andrew Yang for giving CNN credit last time whenever he called MSNBC out on CNN but now the pressure is put on these um, the pro-establishment you know media conglomerates and this shows it now Frederick Kerr Whitfield normally isn't too tough on anybody you know so from what I have researched but <clears throat> It's completely fair. This is a fair and reasonable interview. Um, it's one of the very few that he's gotten. I mean, you just go look on my channel, and I've broken down dozens of interviews he's had, um, both CNN and MSNBC and Fox News. And um, normally, Fox News takes a cake for fairness, believe it or not. Now it's CNN. So uh, I don't want to get too far into the commentary before we do the analysis afterwards. But uh, I, let's just go ahead and roll the clip and, um, you know... Uh, a shout out to uh, Humanity for, for Yang. Uh, this is the channel that first brought it to my attention. So dropped him a like. You guys should do the same thing. Anyway, let's go ahead and play the clip. A recent CNN poll, Andrew Yang is registering at 3%. He tweeted he has raised $2 million in a week and now on the cusp of qualifying for the next debate scheduled for December 19th. Andrew Yang with us now. Joining us from Poughkeepsie, New York. All right, good to see hey, you. We're Frederica. hearing. Happy good holidays. to see you. Great to Happy be here. holidays. I'm at the Hudson Valley Animal Rescue. <laughs> yeah. Tell me all about that. I'm sorry about that. We have a happy little delay. Happy holidays to you. I never get to do these interviews in casual clothes. It makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, I, I understand. I totally feel that. I was just fussing with this blouse I've been wearing. Anyway, so you are, you know, surrounded by a lot of critters there, and I don't mean, you know, in the race for the White House. You're at an animal sanctuary. We're hearing the dogs barking. <laughs> this is an extension of your pledge for humanity effort you know pledge an hour of your time do something you know good for humanity where did this come from why is this important to you well our campaign slogan is humanity first because we need to rewrite the rules of the 21st century economy to work for us and we thought about ways we could actually demonstrate those values and so many of our supporters around the country are doing incredible work in their communities so we decided to have a pledge for humanity and i'm proud to say that over 3,000 hours of community service have been pledged and they're taking place today. Uh, so this is my contribution, but uh, again, there are thousands of other Americans around the country doing great stuff in, in their communities. And it's a fantastic reminder, you know, in this season of giving uh, and here on Thanksgiving weekend, you know, so I mentioned earlier where you are in the polling in the race for the White House, $2 million recently raised. You've got 200,000 unique donors, which helps you nearly really qualify for the next debate. The other part of the equation to qualify is higher polling. So what can you do at this juncture to make sure you qualify? Well, first, I'm happy to say we're actually past 300,000 individual donors. So we're growing by leaps and bounds all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'll be back in Iowa. Uh, I'll have a bus tour of my own starting next week. <laughs> so that We're seeing incredible growth in Iowa and New Hampshire and in the early states. We're one of the few campaigns that's been growing this whole time. And I'm happy to say the growth is accelerating right now at the most important of times. So how important is it for you to be in, you know, on stage, on the debate stage. And I, I asked because, you know, in the last debate on MSNBC, you challenged the network saying they omitted you 12 times and that you vowed not to join any of that network's shows until it acknowledged that. So, A, how important <laughs> is the debate sp stage for you? And has MSNBC acknowledged your experience and observation? Well, I'm happy to say that, uh, that this debate, as you know, will be simulcast on CNN. I enjoyed working with your colleagues, Frederica, who I thought were incredibly uh, professional and right up the middle. So the debates are really important for us because it's another chance to make our case to the American people that we need a new way forward and we need to rewrite the rules of the 21st century economy to work for us. Uh, but we're excited for the next debate. As you said, we're on the cusp of qualifying. We expect to qualify sometime this week. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the frustration or perhaps it's the motivation, you know, um, to get your platforms on automation, value added tax for tech, you know, cannabis legalization, your freedom dividend, you know, to really resonate, you know, or to get more, you know, get more to, um, you know, join your Yang gang. 
<laughs> yeah, well, the yag yag is growing every single day. And Americans are smart. We realize that this economy is not working for us anymore. And a freedom dividend of $1,000 a month would be a game changer for millions of American families. It would make us stronger, healthier, less stressed out. Uh, it would improve our relationships and our decision making. So this is the vision that has caused us to continue to climb in the polls. Um, as you said, we're you know, nationally right now, we're sitting in either fifth or sixth place, depending upon which polls you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And we're still growing when other campaigns are actually contracting. We're hiring people who are leaving other campaigns that are shrinking. So this is uh, a fantastic time for us. And the important thing is that we're going to peak at the right time when the voting starts in February. Hey, uh, voters like to be inspired, you know, by their pick for the White House. And as a candidate, what inspires you about the job of president and what keeps you motivated to keep fighting for it? Well, to me, running for president was the only way that we could actually advance meaningful solutions to the fact that we're going through the greatest economic transformation in our country's history, the fourth industrial revolution. To me, the reason why Donald Trump one in 2016 was that we blasted away four million manufacturing jobs that were based primarily in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and the swing states. I would not be running for president if I thought there was another way that we could actually advance meaningful solutions in the time that we have. And that's what keeps me going. That and the fact that the Yang Gang is so passionate and idealistic and wonderful everywhere I go around the country. And then let me ask you about um, the impeachment process. This is a big week. Uh, you've been very vocal on, on the process, and you argue that it may only help Republicans next uh, November. Americans are virtually split on whether the president should be impeached and removed. What is your view, since the process is underway, should he be impeached and removed? I am pro-impeachment. Federica, but we have to face facts that not a single Republican has come forward to support these proceedings. And we need two dozen Republican senators to uh, actually uh, have impeachment be successful. So we have to face facts that this is not likely to happen. And we need to take every second to make a positive case to the American people that will get them excited about moving us all forward, a new way forward in 2020. When we're talking about Donald Trump, the only person that wins is Donald Trump. And unfortunately, that includes in the context of impeachment. And then do you see uh, the subject of impeachment, the process of it, either hurting or helping the Democratic chances of getting into the White House? You know, unfortunately, what I see happening is further polarization, where if Donald Trump is uh, still president after the impeachment proceedings, which I expect he will be, then he'll be crowing about how he was completely exonerated and the Democrats were on a witch hunt that had been discredited. And his supporters will be very galvanized around that message, while Democrats will still be uh, needing to put forward a positive and optimistic vision for the country. So unfortunately, I do think this could end up energizing Donald Trump's base after he gets through this process, which unfortunately I expect he will. I expect him to be at the ballot box for me to defeat in 2020. That's my job. Hmm. All right, Andrew Yang, uh, thank you so much. Joining us from Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, you and, and your friendly critters around you there. Happy holidays, Rodrigo. I'll see you soon. <laughs> All right. Happy holidays. Thank you so much. All right. So there you have it. I mean, that's just a completely fair interview. As far as my analysis goes, I mean, there's nothing that I really take issue with. I mean, maybe you guys can, you know, go in the comment section below. But from for once, I don't really have to. We don't have to issue a correction. You know what I mean? Andrew Yang didn't have to issue a correction. It was a fair interview. It was a little bit of a audio or, you know, a latency delay more than usual but i think it's just from the nature of where he's streaming from but you know hey i can't you know i can't knock anybody on either side for this interview i like it it was fair there wasn't a question that was really out of bounds and props to cnn i mean you know props to cnn it is the way it is sometimes you gotta call it the way it is and it's not always negative this time it was really good and some of that pressure that you know the yang gang has put on these the the media conglomerates has worked and it's so we can't stop you know and it's continuing to work because we won't stop. And I think it's nice. I think we should see more interviews like this to come. Plus, now that he's making it to the December debate, 
Man, that's um, and me just fundraising and go and 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 clutch time, clutch time. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, that was amazing. That was amazing. So, yeah, I don't know. This this interview is just I'll, I'm liking it a lot. You know, I, I'm very pleased with it. I can't. There's for once, I'm speechless. There's not much I can really say about it. So, um, again, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Maybe I missed something. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I might have another one. Later today or maybe tomorrow. Um, Pete Buttigieg is some hot water, man. He's a, uh, he's just he's hemorrhaging voters, and he's um, he might pull out Iowa, but it's gone everywhere else for him. Um, you know him, you know faking the uh, the fraudulent support for his Frederick Douglass bill and uh, some of his past comments. And uh, man, it's just it's bad for Pete Buttigieg. So he should be falling, and Elizabeth Warren's falling, and. I think the establishment's running scared right now because they can't rely on Biden. He's not viable. Pete Buttigieg, you can't... What are you going to do? You're going to roll the dice on somebody who has zero of the black vote? That's crazy to me. It's crazy. So we're probably going to end up with uh, Sanders, Tulsi, and Yang. Now, it's a, it's a still a far shot, I'm not going to lie. But crazier things have happened, and uh, it's looking good. So anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.